So what the GRTB shows us is that during the last 12 months, retailers have lost over £3 billion pounds of product to shrink and when we bear in mind that a lot of retailers are trying to put their investment into adding value for money for British consumers it is actually money straight off the bottom line for them. It affects most high street retailers to varying degrees. At the top end is apparel uh, which is clearly impacted by the value of items that they are selling and also the scale then moves down to uh, cosmetics um, where retailers have made a lot of effort due to the size of the product to actually offer some form of product protection and that's had the greatest impact. Needless to say, of course, the retailers with the best shrink figures are actually those who have put the most effort into securing the product and it's interesting from the figures to see that the apparel industry actually spends less than the average overall. Well, there's several effects of something being stolen from a retail store. First of all, you've actually got the physical cost of the product that's stolen. You've got the cost of the security and protection that goes into protecting the stores. And you've also got the bigger impact, which is the fact that that product is now no longer on sale and will not be replenished for a customer to be able to buy it until the store knows it's missing. So there's kind of three impacts from just one product being stolen. Apart from the obvious ones such as shrink or shoplifting, there's also been an increase in the number of administrative errors. So 40% of the total shrink figure is actually in internal administration. First of all, it could be that the count is wrong. So a store is expecting, let's say, 50 boxes of a product and actually only 48 are packed and shipped to the store. Straight the way through to general pricing errors, whereby, let's say, a piece of fillet steak is incorrectly tagged as some uh, casserole meat or something like that, and also where the product might have to be marked down early because it's coming to its end of shelf life, but within the system has been costed at full price and the plan is to actually sell. Um, so what retailers are trying to do is basically sell more and waste less. What a lot of retailers will be doing is putting efforts into more accurate asset tracking and technologies such as, R as RFID actually enable retailers to know exactly what stock is where um, in store and even by location within that store. When we come back to actual um, shoplifting, what we've seen is an increase in the UK in the amount of organised retail crime. The figures do vary throughout Europe and I think as we see uh, movements of populations around Europe then we can expect the figures to change even more dramatically. Financial losses in the UK, uh, we mentioned that 40% has come from internal administration errors so that equates to about £1.25 billion pounds worth of lost goods. Then also we have seen the impact of shoplifting which is over £800 million pounds worth of goods and then of course sometimes you have supplier errors as well which can impact by up to £300 million. Pounds. So we are talking whichever dynamic you look at of some very significant numbers. One area that um, is looking to benefit greatly from uh, better inventory accuracy and also greater controls on date expiration would be meat in supermarkets. So as we all know at the moment, as products come to end of life, uh, members of staff and store colleagues have to go and manually check the product and actually then carry out any markdowns or remove product from shelf. What technology will enable stores to do using RFID and the way it's going to develop in the future is that this product will be read constantly at all times by the store, so it will be an automatic inventory process to mark down or to replenish stock and the day will come very soon where even as a customer you'll be able to use your smartphone to scan exactly the same uh, tag or code on a product and actually it will give you the heritage of, of that product such as where the meat has come from. There's um, quite a range of products that get stolen. Um, I think it's important to say at this point that whilst internal shrink, so from store colleagues, is a greater percentage, obviously that's also because they have greater access to stock. DIY presents its own unique difficulties of, of tagging some of the products and yet still allowing people to move freely around the store. Um, the amount of uh, colleague shrink in this area is much lower, but of course the impact of customer theft 
with high value items uh, gives it a greater overall um, value in terms of the, the goods stolen. So it's probably fewer products but actually at a higher value. The most common one actually is power tools. Um, one because of the, the usage. Um, most people who are doing anything in DIY will, will need access to a power tool and again because it's relatively easy to sell on because of the kind of products that are in high demand. It's also because of the packaging um, harder to tag these kind of products. Um, not impossible but more consideration has to be given to how the product's going to be um, taken from the shelf and then carried around the store prior to purchase. I think in the electronics sector there, there's a couple of distinct challenges here. First of all you have the actual cost of high value items, all of which are very desirable. Then secondly you actually have high value accessories such as cases, chargers etc which again, a bit like the accessories in, um, in the apparel market, are very easy to conceal um, but still quite easy to steal um, and take out of the store without paying. I think in the grocery sector, um, most people will probably think of beers, wines and spirits as um, target areas for theft. But surprisingly also, we see quite a lot of um, theft go through on things like cheese and meat, um, particularly on meat and it is a, a high focus area for retailers, again to enable the customer to have a good shopping experience and make a free choice, um, but to make sure that the product is not stolen and that it's paid for before customers leave the store. I think in the health and beauty sector, again, what we have is high value items, quite small, easy to conceal. Uh, normally razor blades tops the list, uh, but quickly followed by mascaras and some skincare products, also suntan lotions and we also have to remember that as a customer really you don't want these products to have been tampered with so it's important that they're merchandised in a way uh, that the customer can make a free choice but actually you know that somebody else hasn't um, tried to steal the product and it hasn't been put back on the shelf before you buy it. As we come into the last quarter of the year, so October, November, December, uh, within the trade it's called the golden quarter. Um, more shoppers hit the stores ready for Christmas, uh, retailers bring in higher value products um, to enable greater choice and so what you actually have is like a perfect storm. You have got more shoppers hitting the high street, uh, greater propensity to steal and higher value items on the shelf for um, unscrupulous shoplifters to, to take from. What we also see is a fairly new phenomenon called Black Friday and we have seen a lot of retailers preparing for this. Um, if you can remember some of the scenes from last year, you have a high number of customers trying to take the most advantage they can of um, heavy discounting. This then presents an opportunity for shoplifting at a time when the retailers are actually trying to make an investment into giving even better value for money, but also they then have the risk of more products being stolen. The police's own data shows that there's been over 329,000 reported shoplifting incidents. This is an increase of 10,000 uh, based on the previous year, so it's up 3% in total. We have to remember that these are reported uh, offences to which the police attend. Usually shoplifters are repeat offenders and keep stealing until they get stopped. So there's probably many many more incidents than this that actually go unreported or for which goods are not recovered. There's a variety of solutions and probably the best way to approach it is with a mix of technologies. In the UK we spend about 0.6% of total sales on protecting products but this is only half what's spent on the continent. However the investment has been made over several years and we do actually see that many of the high street retailers and larger stores actually have a good control of their shrink. It's also about involving people, processes and technology. We've seen lots of different developments. We have seen products such as spider apps put on where you have awkward shaped packaging. We've seen the use of keepers um, to secure a product and also stop people tampering with it prior to purchase. Moving forward, we'll also see the use of intelligent shelving. So a shelf which actually tells the store when replenishment is needed and actually tells the retailer if too many items are being taken at once or causes an alert which says, actually, this is a good customer, they're buying a lot of products, maybe they need some service. Well, we've mentioned some of the hard tagging, which is more obvious, 
but also what has happened a lot um, in the UK market is a big move towards what we call source tagging. So a security tag is applied at the point of manufacture. This means it can either be incorporated in the packaging uh, inside or actually still made visible to the consumer on the external part or a flash to say that the product is security tagged. This type of tagging actually has minimum cost, has been shown to increase on-shelf availability and sales by up to 40%. Yes, the kind of shrink issues do vary country by country. It does represent, however, a continued investment programme, um, but it goes to show that kind of UK retailers can't sit back. They still need to maintain uh, the vigilance on protecting their products in store. I think there's a couple of key points for everybody. First of all is that within the UK we seem to have the largest amount of shrink being accounted for by internal and administration errors. If we focus in on the shoplifting figures, then what we see is of total shrink, shoplifting accounts for 26%, which equates to about £800 million, so a significant amount of money. We're also told by our retail partners that there has been an increase in the amount of organised retail crime. If we then consider the movements of population around Europe at the moment, we can see that the risk is even higher. So the message is that UK retailers still have to be vigilant in protecting their product whilst maintaining uh, an exciting store atmosphere for their customers to do the shopping in. And I would advocate using data such as the GRTB to compare their own performances and see how they can make improvements.